everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. I'm Mark Wallace, and in this episode, I wanna share with you a technique that I've used for 15 plus years for remembering how I set my lights up. And so uh, sometimes I'll have some portrait that I really like, and I wanna duplicate that maybe for a client or a friend, and I can't remember how I did it. And so that bothered me so much that I figured out a way, I got a little notebook that I forgot to bring to the studio today that I have been using for years. So when I have something that I like, I doodle out exactly what's happening in that scene and then I do a couple of extra things. And so I wanna share with you how we're going to do that and how I do it. So I call this flash power notation and uh, it's pretty simple. So today helping me out is Teresa. She has been uh, with us for, I don't know, many videos. And so we set up right behind me a very basic lighting setup that has uh, five lights. So we didn't want it to be too simple or too complex. And we shot some portraits earlier and I think these look pretty good. But this isn't about the portraiture or the lighting setup. It really is about how you write this stuff down so you can remember it in the future. And so I wanna dive right in. The first thing we need to do is show you exactly how this, these lights are set up. So let's do that right now. From the perspective of our camera, we have our key light, which is this soft box right above Teresa. That is our key. And then below that, we have our fill light. So we've got basic clamshell lighting. You can see why it's called clamshell lighting, because it looks like a clamshell. For our separation light, we've got this little guy right here, this ELC 500 with a snoot on it. And what that's doing is it's just projecting this circle on the background that's gonna give us a vignette behind Teresa. And then we have these two strip lights that are adding highlights to the sides of Teresa's cheeks. And so those are uh, what we call kicker lights. So how do we diagram this entire setup so that we remember what we did and the power settings on all of these lights? Okay, we've had a look at our lighting setup, but the point is how do we diagram that and keep track of all of the different power settings on our different lights? And so two years from now, three years from now, we can use that same diagram and make sure everything is set exactly the same. And how can we do this where we can take our key light, change the exposure value, and then everything else changes right along with it. Well, the key to that is this guy right here. This is a light meter. This is a Seiconic L858DU. Uh, it's a fancier uh, Seiconic light meter. All the Seiconic light meters will do what I'm showing you today. They have this function that's called Delta EV. And so what that allows you to do is to take a meter reading of your key light, store it in memory, push the button, and then you can see the difference between your key light and everything else. And so I will show you exactly how that works. But to start, we need to start uh, diagramming out our lighting setup. And so what we need to do is we need to start with our key light. We're gonna look at top down. And so uh, this is Teresa and our camera is over here. So we'll just sort of do that. So now we have our camera and Teresa. So we have our key light. I'm just going to put a square here, that's a soft box. And I'm gonna say K for key light. And I want to make sure that in the future, I know that this is my starting point. And so I'm gonna say zero, I'll put a little slash through it. That means this is the foundation. This is where everything starts from, zero, no difference. So this key light is whatever it is. We don't even have to put what the values, the f-stop values are on this chart, but I will. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go and measure this key light and get it all in memory and do all that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my light meter, I'm putting my lumosphere down because I only want to meter individual lights. I wanna see this light and that light and that light and nothing in between. I wanna make sure I'm very specific. So now let's go back and meter our key light. So I'll go back here. I have pointed my light meter at the key light. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't get any of this fill light. I'm gonna meter that. And that meters right at 12.7. So it doesn't really matter what it meters. So it could be 10, it could be nine, it could be whatever. It just has to be a value. The next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, let me go forward and show you how this works on the light meter. Sort of groovy here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to push this button. This is my uh, memory button. I'm gonna push that. And then now there's this little button right here and that is the exposure difference button. Now, if I push and hold my metering button, 
it will tell me the difference between my key light and whatever else I'm metering. So I know this is 12.7, so F13 essentially is what this is. So I can say this is F13, but it doesn't matter. It does not matter. You'll see why it doesn't matter in the future. Okay, the next thing I want to do is we need to look at our fill light. So our fill light is that light that's underneath. And so I'm going to uh, do like a little dotted line, sort of like this. And so I'll maybe make a note and say this is clamshell. So when I look at this in the future, we know what this little thing is because it's they're stacked on top of each other. So we have a second light here and I need to know what that is. And so I'm going to say fill and I'll put a clamshell in parentheses. So I'm just adding a little bit of detail here. So now let's go meter that fill light. So I'll zip back over here. Remember, I've put this in memory. Now I'm going to point it at my fill light, push and hold. I need to make sure I push the, there we go, push and hold that. Okay, now what's happening is it's telling me what the difference is. So it's saying it's negative 0.7. So it's about three quarters of a stop less power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say negative 0.7. Negative 0.7 is what my fill light is. So in the future, when I'm setting all this stuff up, it doesn't matter if this is F10, F9, F16, F20. I don't care. All I know is when I meter the fill light using that same function, it should meter at negative 0.7. And I know the power difference, the ratio between my key and fill is going to be exactly the same as it was when I set it up this time. Okay, the next thing we want to do is let's add in those kicker lights. So we've got these two kicker lights here and I'm going to just write uh, kicker and kicker. And you might want to add something here specific to what type of light modifier you're using. And so I'll just say strip. Um, and so if you have, like I only have one kind of strip box, but if I had multiple strip boxes, I might say this is a, uh, 20, uh, 200 centimeter or 200 millimeter, whatever strip box, or this is a four by six or whatever, get as much detail as you need to remember what's going on. But what we want to know is what's the difference between this light and our key light and this light and our key light. So we will know that if we go and meter that. So let's go meter. So I'm going to go back to our lighting setup. I'm going to go back behind Teresa. And now I'm pointing my light meter at this light. So I'm metering that and it is negative 6.5. I'm sorry, that's not right. It is negative. Yeah, it's negative two. And that is negative two. So both of these are equally negative two. I think I missed hit the button. So it's negative two. Those should be exactly equal and they are. So I'll say negative two, negative two. So in the future, Again, whatever this meters, 10, 8, 22, it doesn't matter when I do my delta EV. In other words, what's the difference between my key and my kicker? I need it to be negative 2. The last thing I have is my little snoot. So I'll put a little snoot thing here. I'll say snoot. Um, so I'll do that. Maybe I'll put an arrow and I'll say on background, whatever is going to help you remember what this is. Now I need to meter what that is on the background. Now I've already done this just to save time and it is, this snoot is negative three. It is negative three stops. So it is negative three. These are negative two. This is 0 0.7 and that is zero. And so the great thing is with this, in the future, in a year or two years or whatever, um, if I have this and I'm wondering, like, I don't remember what the different uh, relationships between the key light and the kickers, the key light and the snoot. All I have to know is as soon as I have my original meter reading, then I just go in here and use my light meter and say 
this has to be 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7. And I just keep metering and dialing in the power until that is negative 0 0.7. And then my kickers, I just start metering that until I get it to be negative two. And this one is negative two. And this one is negative three. And it's all good. There's one more thing that is really important to help you remember your lighting setups for years in the future. And that is to take one photo of your subject. What is the portrait that you're looking at? And then use a wide angle lens and take a few different portraits of that setup so that you can sort of remember the distances between these. You might want to add things like the distance between here and here is six feet and the difference between here and here is X amount of distance and these are so far apart and that will help you. The more detail you put, the better you're going to remember and if you have that notebook where you're uh, adding in a bunch of things, it might be your iPad or your laptop or a physical paper notebook, this is going to save you in the future. I have a notebook of lighting setups and I think I have about 50 different lighting setups of things like this. And when I go back to that, I'm like, how did I do that? I can flip through and be like, ah, I was trying to do this at an equal value, but it really should have been negative three. And that's why I wasn't getting this subtle look that I was getting with this. Well, that is flash power notation. It's a technique that I've used for many, many years. And it's something that you should tune into exactly how you like to take notes. So whatever you need to write, if you need to use different colors of pens, if you need to write down specifics of your lighting, uh, the brands of lights or the specific light modifiers, the distances, whatever will help you remember. If you start doing this over time, you'll start to see, oh, I should add this or subtract that. But for me, the thing that is the most important is uh, the differences between the key light and all the other lights. So that difference, that delta EV value and which modifier I use. And most importantly, to remember to do those wide angle shots so I can physically see like what light stance did I use and what did I forget to put in the diagram. And all of those things combined will really help. The other thing you can do is take a picture of the diagram that you made and then that will go in your Lightroom catalog right alongside everything else and it will really help you out. The reason I love doing this is because in the EXIF data of all of my photos, the only thing that's recorded is my aperture value. And that's based on generally the key and the fill and that average when you meter that. It doesn't tell you what everything else was set at. And so it doesn't help me three or four or five years down the road when I want to duplicate that. And so flash power notation is a simple technique that I really think will help you. Well, Teresa has been in many videos. And if you want to see some more of her awesome portfolio, well, I've included a link to her Instagram in the description of this video. Make sure you check that out. Also, I've uh, included a link to some other videos about metering and some other things that will sort of expand your knowledge of the things that we did today. So check out the, des the description of this video to see all of those videos. And of course, subscribe to Adorama TV and turn on the bell. We are adding new content every single day. You don't want to miss out. So it's free. Go ahead and do it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.